Okay, thanks everybody. Um, we're going to get started today. Um, so just to introduce myself and then I'll introduce the panelists. I'm Josh, the product marketing lead for Simul Web Sales Intelligence. Um, and I'm going to be moderating the webinar this evening or this morning, depending on where you are in the world. Um, I'm joined by Aaron Scheller, the uh, VP Demand Generation from Bombora, and our very own uh, Jonathan Stefanski, the General Manager of Similar Web Sales Intelligence. So, Aaron, uh, you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you do at Bombora. Of course. Yeah, thanks, Josh. Um, so, just a little bit of background uh, about me. So, I started my career uh, actually with the Portland Trailblazers, a local basketball team, working in the customer to service department. Moved on to demand gen uh, role at a couple of companies, one Mentor Graphics, which is a subsidiary of Siemens. Really, that's where I got my marketing chops, started to understand the value of accurate data and kind of haven't turned back from that data focus ever since. Um, I was at a, a customer, a global fintech, when it was a customer of Bombora, really exciting, and came here about a year ago um, because of such, because Bombora has such a great product. Um, I manage the content demand and SDR teams as a part of my function. So great group of people. And it's been a really amazing experience. And I really enjoy getting to talk to um, partners and customers and get answer questions from webinars. So that's me in a nutshell. Yeah, great to have you. John, over to you. What 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 about you? I don't think I'm as cool as like the Portland Trailblazers background, but you know, uh, we'll do our best to make it sound exciting at least. Um, I actually started my career uh, not on the sales side, but actually on the technical side, you know, network architecture and infrastructure. I worked for a couple of uh, big companies, Goldman Sachs and Akamai. Um, and very long story, I went up pivoting when I was at Akamai to focus on sales, uh, mostly very large companies, Viacom, Disney, competitive Windex, et cetera. And that was kind of the beginning of my sales career. And since then, I've had many different roles, um, CEO of a startup, which we sold more recently, another startup, um, which we also sold, thank God, uh, but really in, in kind of my experience has been, you know, across the board in terms of sales and marketing and business development, uh, both doing and managing teams, whether it's BDRs, SDRs, AEs, customer success, client support, you name it. Um, and I am very new at SimilarWeb. Actually, for SimilarWeb, not so new, but I'm here a little over a month. And um, really, as, as Josh said, the GM of our SI or sales intelligence solution. And really kind of what motivated me to join uh, similar web was having used almost every product in the market. Um, I really had struggled to find a competitive differentiation across different services. And I think with similar web's unique data, I think it's a really exciting um, solution that we've put together that's unique in a, in a very crowded market. And then partnering with companies like Bombora just make that value proposition even stronger. So we're excited to talk a little bit about what those competitive differentiations are and how Intent Data is a part of that solution. Um, and that's kind of, you know, my uh, quick uh, background. Amazing. So as you can tell, we've got a very esteemed panel here. So I'm going to leave most of the answers to you guys. I'm going to pose most of the questions to you. But just to give everyone on the call a bit of a, a background into what we're going to try and accomplish, um, the session actually underwent quite a few uh, iterations. This was actually going to be a call for our customers only. But then when we were looking at the content, we realized this would be extremely valuable, not just to people who are using similar web, but to anybody using intent data in the broader world. So no matter what sales intelligence tool you're using, we wanted to try and make this as actionable as possible. So ideally, when you walk away from the session, you're going to learn three main things. The first is how to effectively use intent data to drive more qualified meetings. So specifically focusing on like building those relationships and building the meetings using intent data. Um, another one is also looking at other signals that you can be using to craft personalized messages and use that to target your prospects. And then the third is actual tips and tricks to implement in your day-to-day -day workflows. So Aaron's gonna take us through a day in the life of an SDR. John's gonna show us a really nice example um, from one of the people on this call. Um, we were looking through the attendee list ahead of time. So hopefully that'll be extremely relevant to everyone on the call. Um, but without further ado, I don't think we've actually dived into it, but Aaron, can you tell us a little bit more about what is intent data? Like just walk us through that and what does that look like? Yeah, absolutely would love to. So in its most simple form, like let's say that you have products and services that you wanna sell. Everybody on the call I'm sure has products and services that they wanna sell. You've done your work, you've defined your ICP or your total relevant market. 
for a lot of businesses, it's hard to know when somebody's actually in market. There's no blinking neon sign that says like, hey, like I really want to purchase something from you in six to nine months. Please have someone call me immediately. Just doesn't happen. Intent data actually gets us close to that blinking sign and shows us which businesses are actively researching your product uh, or service. It'll tell you, you know, what, what do they intend to do? So if you can identify your ICP and, for, and know who's in market before they know, before they even know that you exist, that's pretty cool. So our research shows that 10% of, a, of, of your market is probably in market at any time. So that means if your total addressable market of 100%, only 10% is, cares about talking to you. So how do you figure out who those people are? You can leverage intent data to target these folks with relevant messaging throughout the entire funnel. And really, I think that 10% is, at, is, is a high average. I know that we were, I was talking to one of our customers, Siemens, not long ago, and they said that of their total addressable market of the 10%, only 10% was actually in market at any time. So it can be a very, very small list and very, you know, very complicated. So you couple that with a study from Forrester that shows that actually 70% of the buyer's journey is completed before your prospects know exactly before they reach out to you. So they're not gonna fill out a form until they have a short list. So you wanna really get involved in that conversation before they make that list, because we know that you need to, um, to get to them before they do that RFP, because if they're comparing vendors, then you're probably too late. You're going to need to get ahead of that incumbent bias if they have a current solution, or you know, build trust that your other that your, that your competition isn't. Yeah. So really, the most important thing is that you need to focus and prioritize your resources, get in early, and know what your prospects are interested in, and lead them down that path. We'll talk about an example later today um, with one of our SDRs, Sherry, and how she goes about talking to these people with the right message at the right time. Yeah. And so if you want to go to the next slide, Josh. There's, there's a stat, sorry, I didn't realize there were that animations. Um, but yeah, I, I also just like on this point, I think this is really interesting, Aaron, that like you're taking that like total addressable market and you're like breaking it down into like a manageable weekly segments. Like that 10% is like, these are the people I should be speaking to right now. Yep. And it, it, I mean, it saves you money. So you don't, you know, you don't spray the world with your message. You really want to hit people within the organ within the organizations who are interested with the right message at the right time. Yeah. And so if we look at how Bombora approaches data, it's fundamentally different than a lot of other organizations. So unlike providers who use stream data, um, that manages, gets data from across the entire internet. So think about like Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift. Awesome, love them. Um, and actually I'm a Chiefs fan. I didn't say that in my intro, but go Chiefs this weekend in the Super Bowl. Um, awesome in their own right, but they have their place. I've heard of the Super Bowl, I'm South African, but like I still know what the Super Bowl is, so. It's yeah. amazing, it's on, it's <laughs> on, it'll be late, late Sunday for you, but it's a, it's a big game with great- Yeah, but Josh, players. it makes you feel better. I'm a Jets fan, so I don't know what the Super Bowl is either, so I wouldn't oh. know. <laughs> Sorry, John. Rough year. <laughs> um, so we you, have you mean like rough lifetime, but okay. <laughs> I was being kind. Uh, so, so yeah, so we have a highly curated co-op of B2B partners that from which we collect our data. So this network's made up of over 5,000 sites and is truly the top of B2, the B2B internet. It includes premium businesses and publishers like the Wall Street Journal. Forbes, Business Insider, as well as some smaller niche industry sites. So as we want to look at topics that people are searching on, we know that some of these niche sites are really, really important to understanding the behavior of our customers. So I should also note that about 87, 85, 87% of this co-op is exclusive to Bombora. So, you know, we're the only ones who are able to collect this data. Um, all of the data is ethically sourced and operates, if you're a big enterprise company, it's really important within CCPA and GDPR guidelines. Um, and the data, so from this data that we collect, we measure the volume of research per topic, understanding that those individuals will, um, what they actually consume. So it's not just, oh, hey, you know, there was a keyword on this page we actually understand what the topic means. So to put that in practical terms, like we would know the difference between apple, the fruit and 
a Apple the company. And so we, you know, we, we use our natural language processing to figure that out. So that's a really good example for us to, of how we more accurately determine intent. With this yeah. approach to data, Bombora actually measures the acceleration of content. So if you look at that orange line in the bottom of right portion of the screen, you can see that the historical baseline, we're looking at 12 weeks and kind of what's the normal behavior. That's interesting. And we're excited that people are interested in, in the topics that we care about. But what we really want is to follow that orange line. When it starts to accelerate, that means that there's an increase in the research that's being done on a specific topic. And so we call that the company surge score. And we use that as the foundation of how we prioritize our accounts here at Bombora. So we will go in and on a weekly basis, our SDRs, our account teams will say, okay, who, who is surging this week? Who's showing intent, increased intent? Um, and then they'll use that as their call list. And so we'll go, and again, we'll go through some examples um, later in the, in the thing. And I know that Snowflake increased their SDR meeting rate when they leveraged this approach by prioritizing their chief accounts. So um, really exciting, really powerful stuff. Um, so that's intent data in a nutshell. I, did that did that answer the question? If I yeah, I think I think it's I think it yeah pretty much covered all the bases. So it's yeah we we have this topic like uh, come up quite often because people are uncertain of like the differentiation between something like Google Alerts where it's a company publishing versus people actually researching it and being able to pick it up from the publisher side of like people consuming that content. So this is extremely extremely powerful. But I think Aaron, what you were speaking about was the idea of prioritizing those uh, those accounts. I know you're the VP demand generation, which is primarily a, a marketing function. And John, you've been in uh, sales for a while. So um, I'd be interested on the topic because we discussed this pr prior to the call is who's, whose role is it to prioritize the SDR's work? Where should SDR sit? How does this whole process uh, factor into the, uh, the broader SDR uh, function? So Aaron, what, what do you think about the SDR function and uh, where should they sit? Well, I love my SDR team, and I think that they should sit squarely in marketing. Um, so for, and there are actually a couple of reasons, like all joking aside, like my SDR team is great. Um, so we are responsible for pipeline generation and pipeline creation. So, you know, we want to make sure that as a marketing organization, we have as much input in that early funnel creation stage as we can. So by having the SDR sit in marketing we can be very, very responsive messaging into any trends that we see and make pivots faster. So, you know, we do a great, we spend a lot of time every week actually going through what's working, whether that be from, from the creative that we're launching in market through, through like LinkedIn or programmatic ads, or if it's what's working um, as reach out touch points for the SDRs, we spend a lot of time up there, you know, talking about that early pipeline generation. Um, and I, and does, you know, I should also, intent also we, sorry, oh, I was going to say, was, does the intent also factor into your programmatic approach? Like you using intent to also influence your programmatic advertising to support those SDRs? Absolutely. So we look at the topics that are trending and we have a series of, I think mm, Cam could tell me about 15 different ads that we have in market. And depending on the topics that the companies are showing intent on, we'll serve up ads that are relevant to that, um, use case. Okay. Amazing. John, yeah. on the flip side, sales so, are, are SDR salespeople or are well, SDR marketers? We, we, we love our marketing partners and especially you, Josh. Um, and, and I think the, the, the right answer to this question is, you know, there is no right answer. You know, it could be in, in marketing. It could be in sales. You know, I, I think, you know, the argument for making it in sales um, and something we've done successfully here is this concept of creating pods, right? If we're talking a specific, you know, um, vertical, or specific go-to-market strategy, and then having you know the SDRs right with BDRs and the AEs right, and even the account managers together in one pod, is that it creates a lot of synergy and a lot of communication across that. So I, I think it, it depends very much on what your go-to-market strategy is, right? How many products you're selling, etc. You know, we've just seen um, a lot of success, and we do you know both, right? Sometimes it's marketing and sales, but I think you know the key here is when you have you know, collaboration there um, between the teams. And sometimes, you know, in, in an example like ours, where if you could have a pod structure, right, it creates a really, you know, team oriented where there's a lot of, you know, communication and, and being able to understand where the accounts are coming from. And it works very smoothly 
when they're all part of the same team. Okay, amazing. But I do think that that John hit on something that's really important, and that's that collaboration. It really like none of this works if we don't have really strong collaboration between sales, marketing, and I would actually include rev ops in that too. Um, in order to mm -hmm. completely leverage any sort of data, like you really need to have that three legged stool, so to speak. Um, because without it, um, you know, marketing can send can send data over to sales if they don't know how to ingest it and what to do with it, and there's not a cohesive thread then it just seems it seems disjointed out in the market. Yeah, listen, I, I totally agree with that. I, I think in general, right, there's a much bigger problem about data management and that there's so many different data points and so much incredible insights that can be gathered from that and that the companies that are successful are able to actually take the data and make them, you know, impactful in terms of decision making, right? And that has got to be a very big corporate initiative of, you know, not just giving people reports, not just, you know, providing people with data, but understanding what pain points are trying to solve and what data do we need to make informed decisions, right, to to kind of align our business goals in terms of what we're trying to accomplish, right? And I think, you know, that's that's an overall general data problem that affects all parts of the business. Um, but I think it, it, it's definitely a struggle for all companies. And the ones that get it right are ones that are making it, you know, trying to solve problems and using the data to help guide them in terms of, you know, opportunities, you know, in terms of solving problems. Yeah. And John, you were just touching on like the, looking at the bigger picture and how this would work. So I think actually this might be a good time to just do, we were looking through, like I mentioned at the beginning of the call, we are looking through the attendees and we noticed that there were quite a few attendees from a given company. And I think this would be a good time to just actually show like the bigger picture, how this meets the road and how you're able to connect the intent data to those pain points that you're trying to solve. So um, John, I don't know if you want to walk us through that quick demo right now. Sure. And again, I always love the demos better than the slides. That's just my style. Um, again, it goes back to uh, the difference between, uh, you know, sales and marketing. Um, if you could allow my screen share, which we probably should have tested beforehand, but a little inside baseball here. Um, I'll share my screen. If you can just give me access, Josh. And I'll just, uh, I'll banter in the meantime and tell you what I'm going to show you. So basically what we're going to show you is, um, number one, how do we incorporate Bombora's intent data? within the similar web um, SI, or we call sales intelligence platform. And then also talking about kind of the strategy of just what I was talking about before, which is how to use that data to make it actionable and what other sales signals that we want to include, right? To actually then supplement what we get in terms of um, actionable insights from it. Um, so I can't share yet. Um, you know when you let me know when you got that set, Josh, and I'll take it. Um, um, yeah. Okay. Keep going. Keep going. We'll, yeah. we'll let you All know. Right. So that. let, let me. I'll talk through what we're going to show you once I get access. Um, so the first thing, you know, let's pick a company. Let's say Wix. Okay. And Wix, if you're not familiar with it, is a website builder. And you know, we think about kind of like different, you know, their go-to-market strategy. You know, and for this example, let's say we want to. You know, the first thing we think about when we kind of qualifying leads is, you know, who, what's our ICP, who's the addressable market. And then once we have that, then we can start thinking about how to use intent data and how do we use other sales signals. So the first thing to think about is that number one, we're just going to do a very basic um, idea um, of how do we match our um, sales signals, right? How do we, how do we identify those users? And what we did in the platform is we very simply said, hey, I just want to look for companies that are using, maybe want the, their competitor set, they're using a um, web um, website builder, but they're not using Wix. And then, right, and, and again, all most, you know, SI platforms can do that, right? And give you the information, what's called, you know, technographics, you know, who's using, you know, show me everyone who's not using Wix today, and I want to look at those competitors. And that's, I think, kind of the, the most basic. And, and really where we start to get some unique data Right inside of that, and specifically when it comes to some of the data that um, SimilarWeb has that unique, is some of the traffic data. So I, now I want to look at okay, let's say we want to look at up and coming websites. So show me people who have at least twenty five thousand visitors up to let's say a half a million, right? And we start defining you know our target a little bit more granular. And what what that would show you is it's about you know ten thousand companies that meet that profile headquartered in the U.S. And so, you know, again, it's, it's a pretty large list to go after. And so 
the next idea would be now let's start applying sales signals to that, right? And really, as we talked about, this intent data is really very much top of the funnel, who's in the market. So, you know, what we do in our platform is, is actually apply the Bombora intent signals. And in this case, what I did is we did it very broadly saying, okay, I want to know who in this list of 10,000 companies that meet this ICP are looking at, <clears throat> looking at number one, it, it, things like my competitor set. And we listed there some of their competitors. Who's looking at general terms, right? That might give us more information. So for example, in the terms we looked, the intent data that we looked for were things like, and I'll just bring that up myself, hold on, um, manage my signals, is what we did is we had, we listed th you know four of their competitors, people who are looking for their competitors, and things like website builders, site personalization, site management, website design, landing pages, website hosting, right? So the idea here is who's in the market, right? For terms that would indicate that they're- I'm just gonna, We're gonna share it on my side. Yeah. Okay, uh, cool. Overcoming the technical difficulties, we'll yeah, find a way around. So, you know, basically what we're doing here is we're gonna, we're gonna take that filter and apply it. And then this original list that we had of 10,000 customers now gets shrunk down to a hundred companies that are, we, you know, think based on the Babora intent signals are in the market, which is great, but it's still a hundred companies. And where it gets, I think, even more interesting now is we started adding some of our unique data signals there. So we may want to do something like, hey, we want to look for up and coming websites. So we'll put another sell signal below that one that we just created from the intent data and say, show me companies that grew by at least 50% in the last three months. And that becomes really interesting, right? Because these are now people who are in the intent, right? And I think I can share my screen now. So I'm gonna stop you. So sorry about that, Josh. Oh, good. You know, so let me just, uh, I'll show you where I am. Cool, you guys can see my screen now? Yep. yep. Cool. So what basically, I'll just catch you up, is we just kept it very simple here. Um, in the first screen of, we did, you know, the company, what the technographics were, and in the intent signals, what we did here is, and I'll manage this for you so you guys can see it, is it was something very, very simple where we said, I, I wanna choose, either people are looking for some of these competitors by name or those generic terms. And that's how we got to this 100 list. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is say, okay, great, that's 100. But now- So we've narrowed to, like we started off with a total address market of around 9,500 companies. And now we're at a weekly target list of around 100 companies, right? The question is, who do we talk to today? And what do we say to them, right? So now let's look at the up and comers. So we're gonna apply a filter that says, show me everyone who's grown by 50% traffic growth in the last three months. These are the guys that are starting to spike. And what we also may wanna do is not just who's growing, but who actually has a high bounce rate, right? Because if we see this, you know, and I didn't apply the right filter here. So let me go back, I'm sorry about that. So let me go and we'll go back and add this intent signal. Right, here we go, cool. So the, the, we can see here by, the people that have a high bounce rate and have significant high growth rate. And the nice thing about this is, is that now we're in a situation that when we do the outreach, we can say to them, hey, obviously we don't want to be so obvious that we know your intent, you're in the market. Like that's, like that's me a little bit creepy saying one. that, hey, I, I know what you searched for last week. Correct. Rule number one, that's not how, like how not to use intent data. But basically, you know, a better approach is to reach out to someone who we think is in there and more importantly, say to them, hey, we notice that your traffic is, you know, really exploding, but you have a really high bounce rate. And if you use Wix, we can help you design your website better to keep people engaged longer. And we're able to then show you how you compete versus your competitors. And maybe you have a higher bounce rate than your competitors. And you're able to actually then not just identify the most immediate opportunities that you should be focusing on today, but when you reach out to them, it's not, hi, I'm John from Wix and we have a great website builder and everyone loves us. It's, hey, I noticed that you're, you're doing a great job in traffic, but I also noticed you have a high bounce rate. And also compared to your peers, these four companies, you have a significantly higher bounce rate. I think there's a great opportunity to leverage our platform to help you continue to see your growth, but see more on-site on time, which will result in more revenue. Would you like to talk, right? And I think 
when we think about how to use what the whole point of this is, is that intent is amazing for the top of the funnel, but also how do we kind of drill down to real pain points for these customers? And also most critically, how do we then craft an outreach message that they're going to open our email, they're going to respond to our phone call and being able to use data to actually help them solve their pain points is how you kind of combine what we call additional you know, traffic or business sales circle site signals together with the intent data to kind of give a complete package of helping you understand who to target and what to say to them. So you've gone from, just to recap that, like you went from taking like a target market of 10,000 potential companies that fit into your target markets. You used intent to narrow it down to the hundred that are looking at the intent topics that you care about. And then within that hundred, you even drill down even further to look at the companies that have a very specific pain point that you can then leverage as a value driver to say, hey, I have an idea of what the pain points are that you're looking to solve. Here's how we can help you fix them. So like you've taken them through that whole process from start to finish. Correct. Yeah. Like I said, it is two components, right? Who are the people I need to talk to today? And what should I say to them to get their attention and realize that, you know, we have a strong value proposition to help them solve their business needs. Great. And I think also to get maybe a different, slightly different perspective, I'm going to hand it over to Aaron, who's also going to show us like a day in the life of one of the SDRs from, uh, from Bombora, if you want to walk us through that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I used to do trainings for veterinarians sale for a technical product. And I would have to do online demos and it was always my biggest nightmare, John, that a demo wouldn't work. So I agree that that is the difference between sales and marketing. Uh, and I will tell you if, if the demo, you know, does work flawlessly, then you're doing something wrong. So we're just like, this is showing it's a true demo. We're very excited. I like it. I like it. Yeah. So, um, Really excited to walk you through a day in the life. Sherry Clark is one of our senior SDRs at Bombora, um, taking a, a much, much well-deserved day off today. And so I'm going to try and fumble through a day in her life. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Josh. So I'm going to walk you through a couple components. So how she starts and kind of the research she does with to identify who she's going to contact. And then the second will be talking through exactly how she contacts them. So, you know, how does she identify like what words without sounding creepy? So to John's point, like, don't say like, hey, I see that you're, you know, that you're researching X, Y, Z topic, but coming up with a more nuanced approach. So the first thing that she does, this is a view into one of our dashboards that she looks at every day. So we, she can look at, this is just her accounts. So looking at the companies that are showing intent, these bars down here, and then the number of topics or topic clusters that she uh, that these companies are inter are researching. So you know we're filtering down to just the ones that we care about, obviously. So you know really, if she's going to go through and prioritize, she's going to probably take these like this first third or so and say, okay, great. So of all of the people who are showing, in, of all of the people in our market. Let's look at all of the people who are showing intent. And then furthermore, let's look at all of those people who are showing intent on more than one topic. Super important and helps her to give to prioritize every week. So the data is updated on a Monday on Monday morning. Monday at 10 o'clock, we have account meetings, account planning meetings, and with our sales team. And we kind of set that strategy for the week. So after she identifies which which contacts or which companies she's going to go after, she'll look at the topics that they're that they're surging on. Because it's really important that, you know, we know that these people are potentially in market, but we know that they're in market for something specific. And so we want to make sure that we're using verbiage in our communications that's relevant to the topics that they're researching. Um, so yeah, for I mean, for example, if somebody's searching on um AI technology, and we're sending them something about sales prioritization, that's a miss. Like we want to make sure that we're using AI in our in our conversations. So then from there, she'll go in and pull relevant contacts. So she'll do, you know, we have personas, uh, job titles, regions, things like that, that we're looking at. So she'll go in and use, um, you know, she can use our tools to pull, um, pull the relevant contacts through any contact data provider. Um, and then she crafts the message that's that's based on each persona. So we have kind of high level templates, but really the majority of what we're finding that's working now as the like 
email and phone space is getting super crowded and noisy, that finding that differentiator is really important. And so we actually do, most of our sequencing is semi-manual. So we'll set it, we'll set the, um, the timing for activities to happen, but we don't automatically send emails because we want to make sure that, you know, Sherry will go back for, you know, if you, if you take that, that top example, she'll go back and say, okay, well, well, how has their behavior changed since I've sent the first communication and then can change, shift the messaging based on that guidance. If people have engaged on our website, if they visited a chat bot, she'll continue to monitor that activity. She also will go into places like she'll set up a Google alert for some of our top target accounts and say, okay, I want to be alerted when something's happening that's not that might not be relevant to Bombora, but but it's relevant to their business. They have an acquisition. So that's a, you know, that's a great thing to talk to somebody about. Hey, I see that you acquired a new company. Like, let's figure out how we can help you. Um, you know, if they have, you know, their latest earnings report comes out. So we look at things like that to really help have that more customized conversation. It's more time consuming, but we've seen a much higher result because of it. So if you want to go to the next slide and I can talk through kind of how she, um, how she engages. So it's not, you know, if, if there was one way to engage, we'd all be rich and, you know, on a beach in Hawaii somewhere, but there's really not. So she takes all of that information and she has a multi-pronged approach. So, you know, she we do a considerable amount of LinkedIn reach out, outreach. Um, we have a chat bot on our website um, that does a really great job of alert, like setting up alerts. They're giving us the ability to set up alerts when one of those target accounts is on the website. So she can jump in and, and engage real time. Um, we also, you know, we all obviously send emails. You can see the highlighted words or the, you know, in this example are, um, are Based very specific topics to the tip topics. So, you know, using those words that are top of mind for them really helps increase our engagement. We also have um, phone. So, you know, we do phone. I know that a lot of people, um, it's hard to get through to people these days, but, you know, she does a really good job Um on the phone and as well as events. So we find that, you know, we choose our events by um, looking at our data and saying, hey, you know, which of our customers do we think are going to be there in that in that region? And then I should also say that we overlay this with our demand team. I mentioned a little bit uh, a little bit earlier that our demand team has programmatic ads that are in market, but talk to each of the pain points and use cases that we have um, that Sherry's also targeting. So there's that alignment there. And then, you know, through their account meetings with the account reps, they will have, you know, the account reps are going to talk the same language. So it's it's the same all the way through. Now, the SDRs might be targeting a different persona within an organization for some of our tier one accounts, but there's still that alignment. And, and we know exactly who's talking to who and what they're saying. And so if you want to go to the next slide, Josh, so we do, we, we have a couple different ways that we measure. So we want to look at, and this is just a sample, um, how we measure our, the success. So are we getting in and having conversations with these accounts that are meaningful? So we have three different tiers of accounts. Um, you know, we, the SDR team focuses very squarely on tier one and tier two accounts, um, mainly in an outbound motion. And so we use this as a really good guide and a conversation piece for our weekly sales meetings. So we say, okay, you know, right now we have 70% um, engagement within our tier one accounts. Um, what about that other 30, 30%? Like we want to figure out like, why aren't they engaging? And then also for the 70% of the tier one who are engaging, how are they engaging? And then how do we make that repeatable and scalable? And so, and then how do we filter that down into our tier two accounts as, and tier three as well? So, you know, looking at it that way and seeing like, hey, you know, we have these people that we want to go after. Like some of them, we know that we want to set aside for a little bit. We want to really focus on, you know, the top 50 accounts, for example, right now. Um, you know, this is a really good way to have really meaningful conversations with um, the sales team. So again, back to that collaboration and alignment. Yeah. We also look at the number of meetings with ex with the expanded buying committee. So it's not, you know, the SDRs aren't looking at just, hey, I need to get a meeting. I need to pass it off to sales. It's I want to get a meeting with a relevant person. And then I want to find for the next meeting more relevant people. So how do we find more of that buying committee and really have a meaningful conversation to help compress that time to close? 
We also grade our leads. So we have our sales team grade our leads on a four point scale. So they every week we review like the A, B, C, and D leads. Um, a being like, hey, they're great. Um, and then all the way down to like, hey, this probably wasn't the right fit for us. Um, we found that that's again been really, really meaningful and powerful and having those conversations and with the sales team to know what they're looking for. So if there's a persona that we're targeting that really isn't like, isn't taking it to the next level, let's make some adjustments. So again, with that, like being able to pivot quickly is really important. Um, obviously we, we monitor pipeline generation and then closed one revenue, um, as, as with most organizations. So, but you know, it's good we, to measure revenue. What's that? I said, it's good to measure revenue. Yeah. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. So, so yeah, so that's kind of how we, how we go through kind of choosing the accounts, um, getting the account information, communicating to them, and then how we measure it on the back end. Because I think that without that measurement piece, you're really, you know, going to struggle to find success. Yeah. And now um, I'm just looking at the different tiers here. I know this wasn't really part of our, our plan to go through this, but like, what's the sweet spot in terms of personalization? I know John touched earlier on like maybe a hundred accounts, you said maybe 50 accounts per week. Like, what do you guys think is the the manageable amount of personalization that an SDR can tackle at a given time? So that's a great question. And so we have, so our our accounts are tiered. So our top tier accounts are huge corporations that are very sophisticated and complicated. So we factor that into part, a portion of their time allocation for the week is just doing research. So, you know, we want them to be targeting you know, on any given week, it also depends on what the what the data shows, right? So probably 15 to 20 accounts um, that, and, you know, and we also have as a part of the, um, the sequencing is we'll have accounts at any given time from outside that week, right? So it'll be like 15 to 20 new accounts within that week. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. John, uh, yeah, what let do me, you let think? Let me jump in there. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I agree. You don't want to overwhelm them, right? Because more is less here. You know, one of the things we've we've seen to kind of move the, the numbers up and kind of fill the top of the funnel with qualified leads is automating some of that work, right? So those sales signals we talked about um, can be sent to you, you know, daily, weekly, et cetera. And that does a lot of the work for you in terms of, you know, news, what's going on in the lead, any changes in terms of data, any intent changes, et cetera. So the fact that you don't have to log in and do a lot of that manual work, but we're proactively pushing that content takes a lot of that legwork and it allows our SDRs to be more effective because they don't have to do a lot of that research. And it's tied back to the kind of the key data points that are relevant for those leads. And they're getting that when they walk in in the morning an email with the relevant information about helping them prioritize who to focus on. So I think there are ways that you can, again, not overwhelm an SDR, but help provide them with meaningful insights that help them prioritize and also create good outreach messages in a proactive way that doesn't require a lot of manual work. Yeah. Just to be mindful of time and to leave some time for Q&A, um, what would you say is the, the best practices in terms of this? Um, this is more for Aaron, I think. Like, Aaron, I think, what would you say in terms of, like, the leveraging this, um, this approach? What would you say that the best practices are for SDRs in terms of leveraging so intent data and measuring it? So I'd say, you know, kind of don't be creepy. Number one, so kind of, you know, back to what we talked about, like- It's a good rule for life as well. It goes for life as well. Yeah, it's a good life, good life lesson for everybody on the call or on the webinar. Um, yeah, don't don't talk about like, I see you're researching, be a little more nuanced. Um, engage early and often. So, you know, don't, it takes seven, seven um, conversations or engagements to get in somebody's mind. So make sure that you're, that you're reaching out and you're reaching out in a variety of ways. So, you know, kind of like with, we find with our content, um, you know, people consume things in different ways and at different times. So try different times of day. Um, you know, we found that we get, a, we get quite a bit of success, um, sending communications later in the week. Um, know that there is no silver bullet. Like there is no, you know, like you need to try things and, and what works for one business might not work for another. So, you know, really, you know, be authentic and um, just know that that it's hard, but it's very, very manageable, um, especially when you have a good team. Um, and then do your research, make sure that you understand, you know, what what the companies are looking for and, you know, how how you can best help them. 
Yeah. Yeah. I would, first of all, I think they're great points, Aaron. I would kind of add just two quick ones on top of that, which is one, uh, you know, further to what your point is that I think, you know, the whole, we talked about the data in the very beginning and how we use that, but again, it's so hard to get your message through, whether that's an email and a phone call. We think about your own news. How many emails do we actually respond to or, you know, and actually, or phone calls that we actually engage with. And so I think there are ways to be, you know, fun, authentic, and, and help think about sitting in their seat about what pain point they're suffering from and how you can help them be successful in their job. That's what captures people's yeah. attention and thinking about what, how does our solution help you solve your problem, right? It's not about us. It's about you. And I think oppressed people, that's what people are looking for. And I think something, you know, Josh has heard from me many times is talk like a person, right? Not like a marketing slash robot, right? We don't, we use terms and sometimes in marketing. And I know we have a lot of salespeople on the call. We're probably nodding their heads right now yes. in agreement. You know, like, and yes, I, I said, yes. I'm like, I said, I say, would you talk that way, Josh, to your wife, right? And is, can you tell us it's written by marketing or written by a real, you know, human person? Yeah. So, and all kidding aside against marketing, but I think, you know, people buy from people they know, they like, and they trust. And I think, you know, putting your own spin, speaking in, in very simple, direct points, keep it short and sweet. And and people can tell when it's, a, it's with an automated email. And, and the best thing is not, is, is to kind of, even if you're automating the process, do it in a way that's very authentic, as you said, Aaron, and and, and real and personal, right? I think those, those are kind of the tips that I think on top of what you said, right? Really make the difference between success and failure in, in the outreach side of things. And I, and also like, share examples. I mean, I send probably five examples a day to the SDR with my take of why I think that, you know, like, Hey, like this is like, I got one this morning where it said, hi, target account list. I'm like, Oh, okay. Great. Well, I know I, that I'm on their target account list. I, I like high first name. Like <laughs> I, I like that one. That's my favorite. So, yeah. But then I got one about, you know, was I hit eaten by an orangutan? And that was funny. Like, you know, in inject humor, whatever. So Oh, Josh, I know we're getting up on the end of time, so I think we want to leave a couple of time for like, some of the questions we may have. Yes, we're going to dive into those in a second. But again, I, I'm very much, I'll be the first, Mark, to put my hand up and say that we need to leave the word optimize or synergize out of our uh, out of our like communications to prospects. Mm -hmm. um, there are some words that just need to be left left alone for a few years, just to let them breathe, and then we'll bring them back once, uh, once marketers have stopped using them. Um, we'll make great, sure but, that Ryan goes through and, and scrubs all of our joint collateral <laughs> for. A... Yeah, I'm. I'm also going to have to do a, a scrub on my side. Um, <laughs> but I've got a few questions here. Um, one of them is, um, Aaron, you mentioned other types of signals, but what other types of signals do you think companies need to monitor? You mentioned Google alerts. I know this could also be a good question for for John. Like, which other signals do you think are relevant for SDRs to monitor? Um, yeah, I mean, so we set up Google alerts, um, you know, I think it, it kind of is industry specific too. So, you know, you can monitor different, um, publications within, um, you know, if you're in like, like looking in FinTech or whatever, you can monitor those publications. Um, so yeah, but just making sure that you look at what what is it what intent topics it is that they're looking at great and john do you have anything to, to add like other types of signals that you think are relevant for sdrs to monitor if they're going to make an impact yeah, I, th I think the answer to that question you know is it's got to be personalized right so it depends on who your audience is who's your buyer what are their pain points is what we keep talking about and then you can there's a whole host of signals you can talk about in terms of intent data news data traffic data you know engagement data you know what depending if you're selling to a B to B or B to C in their specific industry. So I, I, you know, I think the answer to that question is it's got to be personalized, aligned with the specific pain points of the person you're selling to, and those are the sales signals that you want to trigger, and those are the ones that are going to resonate when you do your outreach. So it's highly personalized based upon who who you're outreaching, where they are in the organization, all of that kind of stuff. And I think that a lot of this seems overwhelming. So I'm sure that on the call, there are people kind of on every end of the spectrum that we've talked about today. So people who are just starting on their intent journey and then people who are much more sophisticated than what we're doing. Um, it's it's important to know, like start slow. It can seem overwhelming. Like we're talking about a lot of things that seem really complicated, um, but just make sure that, that you start with that foundation and you don't have to boil the ocean at one time. Like start with an Excel spreadsheet and move on, move up from there. 
Great. We have another question here from uh, from Tom Benson about how confident are we on the technographic lookups um, from someone in the payment space. It's a little bit hit and miss in the uninstalled install dates, um, and the intent signals are great, but it's only if the technographics work in that uh, in that area. So again, I'm happy to tackle that, uh, John. Unless you want to tackle it as well, um, but I think in terms of technographics. Again, it's all about the source code in the domains and the subdomains. So there's quite like a, a broad way of looking at it. Um, Tom, I know um, I've seen your name in the past in some of our communications. Um, so happy to reach out and connect with that on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But out of all the technographic providers, I think we're probably the most confident in our offering, um, just to put that out there. Yeah, I, I would um, to sell that up a little bit, Josh, is I think, first of all, a lot of times where you get, you know, the uninstalled install dates is exactly what Josh said is some of the subdomains, right? People testing something do that. So, you know, the one of the nice things is also for us, if you know where the domain, the subdomains or the domains, you can filter the technographics on a specific domain or subdomain, which really helps. Um, and the other nice thing about our, our technographic solution is if there's a technology, right, that's not in the list that we provide, then you can actually then um, request that and we can actually do the research and add them as well. So it's a nice feature that if there's a specific technology you're looking for, um, we can then do some research and add that to the list as well, which is nice. Yeah. Um, another question we've had is that we, we kind of breezed through the setting up of the, uh... <laughs> Tom says, don't worry, he requests technographics all the time, but um, just to do um, a quick showing of how we set up the intent data in similar work, because we kind of breeze through that just to show how we can actually add intent data topics to um, your similar web sales signals. Yeah. So for again, we, we, I know we got a little bit of a, a uh, issue here in terms of that, but hopefully maybe after the uh, deck, we can send everyone a quick email just to show, you know, a video of how it works, but it's really very, very simple, right? There's a cell signal um, on top and you manage your signals. And so what you do is basically then the first step is the intent signals. And there I'll pull it up admin. on my side just uh, quickly. Yep. It'll take a, a few seconds your, to show. Your your administrator has access to um, all of those Bombora intent signals, and will allow specific topics or you know in that intent section. And this is the sales management. So this is the admin of the account. Um, and obviously, the broader you are in terms of your signals, right? And the more signals you have, the higher likelihood you're going to be able to actually identify users. But this is kind of like the intense signal management side of like what signals are relevant for our audience. And once you've selected that, um, there's a sales signal management console that then what happens is when you apply it to a specific list, um, you then start with, in the case of intense signals, what you do is you say, hey, I these are the sales signals that I'm looking for and I wanna see where they're coming from. Do I care of any country? Do I care only sales signals from the US or the UK and what have you, that becomes the first filter. And then you could then assign other signals on top of that. And so as Josh is showing you, you can also then see what are the specific signals that they're looking on, right? Not just like there was a sales signal, but which are the signals? And then you could start layering on, as we talked about, the sales data, the engagement data, the traffic data, you know, all the other signals on top of that, that then kind of like go lower down the funnel in terms of that. So it's a really easy setup in terms of first and foremost, what are the intent data is that's on a, on a, on a you know, account level that are accessible. And then you simply you apply the specific intent filter, content filters that you want, and that will then be applied to your list. Great. Um, another question was about third party cookies. I know that that's a big topic going into this year. Uh, Aaron, is there going to be any impact with third party cookies on the Bombora availability? Um, so very, very hot topic. Um, and right now, you know, we have a very established co-op. We, like the rest of the market, are kind of looking at, you know, how do we handle third-party cookies? And right now, we, you know, we know that there will be a small impact, but we're working with our, with our publishers and our co-op partners to make sure that the data is still available um, within the Bombora data. I think that was also from a similar website. That was one of the main reasons when signing the partnership with, with Bombora is that we know that this is a data set that we can rely on, that we can commit to providing our customers with that will be still around after the third party cookies come into effect and will still be valuable to our, our end users. So that's also from, from our side. 
Great. I think that those are all the questions for this evening. Uh, thanks, Aaron. Thanks, John. It's been uh, great being with you this evening. And yeah, we'll be sharing the recording of the session. Um, and yeah, thanks everybody for joining.